Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another Onshape Quick Tip. Now, in our last video, we showed how to import photos into Onshape to help with the design process. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to create a loft using two profiles and two guide curves. So I'm gonna start out by going to the front plane and beginning a new sketch. Once I get into sketch mode, I can use that photograph that we imported in the last video to help guide the design process. I'm gonna utilize a tool here called a Bezier spline. And with a Bezier spline, what you do is you draw a series of points that represent almost a control frame for the spline. So we can see here that I was able to create these points and now I'm able to drag these points around to define this Bezier spline. By using these points, sketch relationships, and dimensions, you can really get the spline to be close to the curvature of the image that we imported. So I'm gonna start out here by kind of locking down this first point. And this point has a dimension from the very bottom of the part of about 62 millimeters. That should be about the center of that handle. I can also take a dimension here from the outside to the inside of that handle, and that's gonna measure at about 8.75, and I measured that with the caliper on the physical part. When it comes to this point here, a tool that's very useful, especially if you're gonna mirror, which we are going to mirror this entire handle, is I can take this point and this point and then use the V key on my keyboard to make them vertical to one another. I can also create relationships or dimensions to these other points, but I think in this case, I'm just gonna use a drag and drop technique to get the handle to pretty much match the curve of the physical part that's represented in this photograph. Now, when it comes to this region here where there's extra material, I think I'm gonna be adding that material with a fillet, so I'm not gonna worry about the curve matching that region there, and instead I'm just gonna focus on the rest of this, this handle here and the curve matching the rest of that handle. And I think that looks pretty good, and that's gonna become the first guide curve for my loft. But now I need to create a second guide curve, so once again, I'll go into this Bezier spline command, create my control points very similar to what I did with the first curve, but this time I'm gonna add one extra relationship and that's gonna be a horizontal relationship between these two points so that when I create my first profile, it can be pierced by both of these guide curves. I'll take this point and this point and once again make them vertical. And I will once again just use a drag and drop technique to try to get this outside curve to match up with that outside curve in the photograph. And I think that looks pretty good. I've used this technique many times of bringing a photograph in and using the photograph to kind of retrofit a 3D printed part to an existing part, and it works really, really well. So I encourage all Onshape users to really take some time and try using this technique and see what kind of results you can get. At this point, I think I'm pretty much done with that sketch, so I'm gonna hit the green check mark, and I'm gonna use Shift N to rename that sketch. I'll call that one Guide Curves for Handle. And now I'm going to create a new reference plane at this location. And so when we enter the reference plane command, we can see that there's a number of different types of planes that we can create. Well, the one that I'm gonna use here is gonna be called plane point. So I'll pick this plane. I'll pick this point here from one of my guide curves. It doesn't matter which one because they're, they're horizontal to one another. And now I'm making a new plane here, plane one, which is parallel to the top plane at that point. I'll hit the green check mark and now I can begin a new sketch on that new plane. And this sketch is going to be of an ellipse. So this is found here under the circle command. We've got the ellipse command. And a little trick that I like to use when it comes to working with ellipse is I like to just add a discrete point here at each of the quadrant points. Now, you don't have to do this. You don't have to add this point in here, but it just gives me a lot more confidence when it comes to piercing this sketch geometry to the guide curve. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna pick this point here, this explicit point that I just created, and I'm gonna pick this guide curve here, and then I'm gonna use the relationship known as Pierce. And the way Pierce works is wherever this curve is passing through the sketch plane, that's where I want this point to be located. So for this other point here, you know, I want this point to be located where this curve is passing through. So I pick this curve, I pick this point, and now wherever that curve is passing through this new sketch plane that I created, plane one, that's where that point is gonna become located. And so I hit the pierce command, and there we go. I've now pierced that profile to both of those guide curves. Very useful when you're doing sweeping and lofting. 
And so now the final dimension I need to create is gonna be the width of the handle itself. And I measured that with my calipers on the physical model at 16.6 millimeters. And that gives me the sketch for the first profile for my loft. Now to create the second profile for my loft, I'm gonna once again use the plane creation command, but this time I'm gonna use a different option. I'm gonna use the option curve and point. And what this option lets me do is it lets me pick a curve or an edge and pick a point and the new plane will be created perpendicular to the curve at that point. This is very useful when you're creating sweep profiles or loft profiles because you really want your loft profile to be perpendicular to your loft guide curve. So I create a new plane there. That sets me up nicely to create a new profile. And since this profile is so similar to this profile down here, I'm just gonna right mouse button on that profile sketch and choose copy sketch. And then I'm gonna right mouse button on my new plane and I'm gonna choose paste sketch. And what this does is it saves me the extra steps of adding a dimension to this ellipse in this new sketch. And it saves me the extra step of adding those points there at the quadrants. You can see those points are already there. So all I really need to do is just pick this point, pick this curve and choose pierce, pick this point, pick this curve and choose pierce. And that width of that ellipse is the same in both profiles. So I'm now done with that sketch. Very easy when you know how to use copy sketch and paste sketch in Onshape. So now I'm done with that profile as well and I'm ready to perform a loft command. And so I go to the loft feature here in Onshape and I choose to loft this profile to this profile. And it generates a preview, but uh, that's, that's not really what I want. I certainly don't want that as the loft. And this is where I need to tell Onshape to follow this guide curve and this guide curve. And I'm gonna do that in the loft control box here under guides and continuity. So when I hit that check mark there, I can now begin selecting that first spline. And look at that, the loft immediately begins following that spline and that second spline that we created. And there we go. Now we are lofting from this profile to this profile, but instead of going in a straight line, we're following guide curve one and guide curve two. And that looks almost perfect. There's one last thing that I want to do here, and that is here under the start profile condition. I'm going to say normal to profile. Now, this is a little subtle, but what this does is it makes sure that all around this perimeter of this first profile, the entire face is beginning perpendicular to that plane that the sketch was created on. And the reason this is important is because this will help to ensure that when I mirror the handle to the bottom side, that it's a nice, smooth, tangent transition. So it, it will almost barely move when I check this option, but if you watch closely, you'll probably see it move just a little bit. Just a tiny little subtle shift, just a slight difference I know, but it is the appropriate thing to do if you know you're gonna be mirroring about that face. And I know that I am gonna be doing that in the next step here. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark that finishes that loft. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that loft is looking. Let me do that mirror command. So I'm gonna go mirror, and I'm gonna say that I want to mirror using a feature. So this is gonna be a feature mirror and I'm gonna mirror this loft and I'm gonna mirror it about this planar face here. And yes, that is looking pretty darn good. It more or less matches here in the front view. You know, it's close enough for what I'm trying to accomplish. If I really needed this to be perfectly matching to the original geometry, I probably would have just opted to make the entire sketch instead of just making half of it and mirroring it. But for what I'm trying to accomplish today, I think that looks definitely close enough. I think that looks really good. Let's hide some of this geometry. So I'll hide that sketch of the photo. I'll hide some of these planes by using the letter P on my keyboard. And wow, that looks good. Now here in my view settings, I've got the option for view, tangent edges, tangent hidden. So if I change that to visible, you can see that this is still two faces. But when you do a lot of surface modeling in Onshape, you'll probably get used to switching this to hidden just so that you can clearly tell that that is a smooth transition. And wow, that is looking pretty good. Ooh, but I do have a little bit of cleanup to do here on the inside. I think I'm going to do that using a delete face command, but I think I'm going to save that for another Onshape quick tip video. So for now, that is how you can create a loft 
using two profiles and two guide curves. Let me know down in the comments below, what did you think about this video? Did you learn anything new? And did you have any questions for me? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next episode.